Uh, greetings in the name of the Most High. Um, basically, the extension of my private life, <laughs> the Zeph Report. Uh, because I found myself in conversation yesterday talking about the very same things we talk about here, the spiritual battle, gang stalking, persecution of lambs for no other reason that other than they're not Satanists, which happened in my youth. And the memory surfaced of being at this house, and it was very disturbing. It was like someone told me there was a party there, and I went there, and it turned out they were all just waiting for me to confront me, harass me, mock me, tease me, you know, people that don't even know me. I, I didn't, it really was traumatizing. I had suppressed that completely. They didn't hurt me physically. But when they, I was kind of in a state of shock. And uh, then they started high-fiving each other like they did a great job. Like, job well done, everybody. Okay, take your masks off. You know, this was a setup. And I had, uh, no, 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 we're not going out there. So I had... You know, that surfaced, and uh, so I needed to talk about it a little more for clarity because it's uh, obviously something that had uh, hurt me so much, uh, that kind of bullying. I didn't even, I didn't really understand because I didn't really know all the people there. So... And I was only like, you know, 16 or so. So I didn't really know much about anything. I just didn't have any clue why they would invite, <laughs> invite you to your own uh, traumatizing event and why that was important. And it begged the question, and this is probably why I suppressed the memory. It begged the question... Um, Funny, it was also the house of a celebrity, you know, people you would know. And later on, it led to uh, meeting this illegitimate daughter of, you know, out of wedlock of, of this particular celebrity. And, and uh, I didn't understand that either. But I think that was all to remind me of this event. And I, I remember I walked home and alone and I never did I mean it was really frightening to see people suddenly turn on you scripted and to have you just be there you know it was like something I heard about oh come on over there's a party blah 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 and then of course it was in, in my dishonor but what good is it traumatizing a kid if he doesn't know what what the what the reason is? It just looks like people just suddenly decided to like you're in a nightmare and they all just turn on you like a very paranoid thing to think, right? So that kind of level of surprise produces extreme paranoia and fear. So much so that I you know, suppressed it, and no, no, no one was killed there. I mean, there was not, you know, it's not not one of these great stories that they like to tell on the internet. Yeah, there was a sacrifice, and they 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 started on the cats, but that wasn't enough, so they killed, you know, someone there, or they killed me, or whatever, because I wouldn't be here to tell. But um, I have no doubt these same kids uh, went on to 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 do all kinds of nefarious deeds, including murder, of course. Because you see, this is lead. I look. I've been really the last about you know fifteen hours. I've been really bummed out. I mean, not bummed out, but really vexed in my spirit. Before we go any further, uh, my friend shared a, a scripture with me from Jeremiah, and I think you know. Let's just start our little meeting today with this because this is going to make you feel better. 
I can't believe it. It was like tailor made for me. And uh, uh, my friend who sent it, it's tailor made for him too. Maybe it'll be tailor made for you. It's Jeremiah 20, 7 through 18. And I don't think he'd mind if I share this with you because you're in the same boat I'm in a lot of you. So here we go. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me. So he starts off complaining to the Lord, okay? But watch what happens. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. He's complaining about the stalking and the mocking. I wish I had this verse yesterday. Okay, do I have your attention? All right. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. And then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more of his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. For I heard the defaming of many. Here you go. I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous and seest the reins of the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee I have opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise you the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man-child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew, and repented not. Let him hear the cry in the morning, and the shouting of the noontide, because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave, and her womb to always be great with me. Wherefore came I forth of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? He is saying to the Lord, very similar to David in the Psalms. Am I born so I can just be shamed every day, mocked, shamed, tortured, persecuted, followed, stalked, harmed? And so many times, Lord, I'll just pick up where Jeremiah left off because I feel I've, you know, obviously we're identical. Um, and Lord, what about all the uh, near misses? You know, uh, people that actually, for no reason, no clear reason that is ever stated, they want to take you out. And they're angry that you live on. That should have been taken care of a long time ago. What should have been taken care of and for what reason? Uh, you just don't know what's going on. What should have been taken care of and for what reason, I said. And this brings me back to when I was 16 at this uh, so-called party. What was the purpose of that? I mean, to make me ashamed, to, to uh, traumatize me, to, to cripple me, well, they succeeded in that. I was traumatized and hurt deeply, and I never recovered. So they, they got their way and they celebrated. But what was the, but you're not hearing my question. You're not understanding what I'm, what I'm, why am I bringing it up. What was the purpose of that? They got what they wanted. Was that it, to just feed off my trauma, just decide that, well, I'm, I'm the one? So target is 16, really? And the answer is absolutely. 
And who are they? Like I say, they move up from that kind of thing, you know, to that's like Carrie, right? She's invited to the prom and then they spill the pig's blood on her, right? Humiliate her in front of all these people. They brought me there to mock and humiliate me in front of all these people that I had no ill will with. I wanted, you know, to socialize, to be liked, whatever. You know, it was a setup. Uh, it was very effective because I didn't, you know, people were coming at me that I didn't even know, I didn't understand. It was uh, like if, as if you're walking in the, in, in, you know, in a mall and suddenly everyone in one of the stores comes running out to look at you and starts laughing and pointing at you for no, you, you, you don't, you know, it's, it's freak out, you know, it's where the hell did that come from? And, um, you know, those who say that they wonder if I've had experience or had experiences like they've had, well, uh, how far back do you want to go? How many years do you want me to, 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 to chalk up of, of being, you know, pretty much tortured? Uh, well, you know what I really like? You know, uh, someone asked me, well, what, what's your purpose? And it's like, well, my purpose is, as you see, I'm doing my purpose. You know, my purpose is to, I live to tell, to explain this you know, in, in proper reality terms. Since they're cowards, all of them, you know what I mean? If they're going to kill someone, they sneak up on you, you know what I mean? They're, they're not, you know, if they're going to betray someone, they stab you in the back. They don't, everything is deception and it's all cowardice and it's all run on fear and greed and, and, and lust and, and it's just sickness. They're just sickness personified. How could I ever, well, I know. And, well, the fact that this took place in a Hollywood celebrity's home, the parents and the and the older uh, sibling. I'll just put it that way. Um, very famous. And that made it even more bizarre. You know, and I, I guess maybe they you know wanted me to commit suicide or something, and uh, that was the that was the goal. You know, um, had circumstances been different or later in life, it would have been a setup for you know you either join us or die. Well, who's us? Who's us in that situation? Uh, us is Hollywood. Hollywood celebrities. You know, those were the parents. The parents were out or whatever, and these were the kids having their little party, but it, it's all sanctioned. It's all, they're all on the same page. So who, who, who uh, what is this sim symbolically about? And it's like, well, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're type and for whatever reason, and, and you know, and, and I'm a coordinated good at sports, I'm a handsome kid, you know what I mean? Um, um, smart, I've, I've got, uh, you know, I like friends, I like people, I'm very I'm gregarious socially. The, the, I, it's inexplicable how something like that could happen. I mean, it's so bizarre. But then, of course, you know, it's good that I brought it up because uh, it, 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 it clears it out of my system, for one thing. And, you know, and let, because I know exactly what happened there, I can, now, I can now deal with it, of course. What happened there is that they all had sold their souls to the devil, as everyone in Hollywood does. And, um, and I hadn't. And so they wanted to break me down for me to eventually beg them to give me a chance so I can sell my soul to the devil or pass on through the other side or whatever and join them. But anyone that is not joining them, they're seeking, just like it says in the Jeremiah, because he, he was stocked the same, you, I, I, I'm, I'm having the same experience as Jeremiah and uh, the other prophets. That's right. We're in the same family. Kindred spirits. Same result. So, you know, I went to the house of the dead. Let's put it in prophetic terms. Let's, 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 let's up this conversation. I went to the house of the dead, and the dead mocked me because I was alive. But at the time, I had no idea, you know, who they were. And indeed, when I saw them again in various capacities, they, uh, 
they didn't seem to be particularly interested in me. I mean, there was, it was like they didn't know me. It was like they, the, another dimension. In other words, that this happened in some dimension, and then it went back to what it was before, where they would never do something like that. People just don't behave that way. So, you know, we had that. But basically, it's you're talking about the demons. Knowing that eventually I will do the Zeph report, okay? Knowing that I eventually will give my life to the Lord. Knowing that I will be speaking the truth to make up for what these lousy, shameful, satanic pulpits have done in this country, which is disgusting. Disgusting. Horrible. The worst. Hell. The ultimate burning in hell will be these pastors. And they will burn. I felt like calling one today and, that I had known and, and just saying, look, I'm just telling you, you know, you keep on like this, you're going to burn and burn and burn. You have no idea the pain and suffering that you're going to uh, accord for yourself. Because when you die, there's just no place for you but hell. And even if it's, you know, being recycled, spin cycled into this reality, the next time around, if there is one in that way, it will be pure hell, <laughs> pure pain, pure torture. No, I, I, you know, I don't, but I'm not a big believer in reincarnation because it's more mysterious. But I'm kind of, you know, I have to deal with that subject lightly because uh, people get upset, you know, with that idea. And uh, not people from, you know, it's controversial. And I don't want to get distracted in that. So, you know, let's just say that there are consequences to how you live your life. And there are consequences as to what you choose. And if we want to just go by the face, face value of the Bible that says the twice dead will burn in the lake of fire forever, I'm fine with that. Good, good with that. Because the book of Daniel, so from, from the Old Testament, it says they will, they will exist after death in everlasting shame. That's forever in shame. And so that's how Daniel describes it. And so either one of those is fine, you know. Uh, I'm just saying there's a consequence. And, you know, so when one sells one's soul, and this is, and yesterday I went looking and I kind of tortured myself by looking at, uh, some people had videos on celebrities who had sold their souls, and I'm dealing with, you know, and, and, and the celebrities that I'm talking about were like family shows, you know. You'd think they were just as pure as the driven snow from what you see on TV, Right. <laughs> uh, that's the other irony about it. You know, selling your soul to be a uh, a presenter on you know you, you know of 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 a, of a family Disney picture or something. You know, to have a reputation of a, as a good person from you know from from uh, from you know the kind of films that you've done or the TV show you've done, and. Um, it turns out that, you know, they're the bigger devil, the biggest devil worshippers are the, the nicest ones, right? Um, so, I guess the anger toward me was, and then if we look back in my history, we see that I had plenty of chances, I guess, through trauma-based trauma abuse, satanic ritual abuse, things like that. Uh, when I was, you know, five or six in that age bracket, I should have, you know, been there, right? Because they start you off early. And yet, uh, didn't take, fought back. And as my mother liked to say, she said, well, you fought it all your life. I'm like, you're not supposed to be involved in illegal activity like that. You know, you're supposed to be an example for the children, you know? I mean, so everywhere I looked, there was betrayers, you know, and I didn't do anything. I, all I was trying to do was figure out what the hell's going on. So I was traumatized by that in an early age. And then that eventually, in a way, stopped me from, you know, I mean, it, 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 I had never dealt with that trauma. I was just like, you know, I was unaccessible unacces to other people. And same, my behaviors were not, and responses were not the same as what they're used to. They break a... They break you down, and when you're broken, you cry uncle, and then they, they take you in, and they tell you you're a slave, go get the coffee, and you work your way up in their system, you know, or 
Uh, but it's a lot more nefarious than that because there's a lot of murders going on. Like in Hollywood, there's people dying all the time and kids of celebrities dying and all kinds of stuff dying. And all those are sacrifices. You know, It's reported, oh, it was an accident. He just lost, I was reading about how John Travolta lost his son. Oh, really? He slipped and fell and hit his head in the, in the bathroom. Uh, okay, f really? You know, Eric Clapton's kid just crawled out the window. Really? Uh, you wonder. You, you, see, I wouldn't even bring that up. And maybe those are inno innocent things. But because of the milieu of all this, and because of all the, um, I mean, I know personally several kids that were just like me that didn't know, really have a clue what was going on because of prior trauma, probably in my case, to where, you know, people getting killed and then they, they didn't make it either. And they were just pure heart kids. They were good kids and we were friends and, you know, and eventually they just got taken out and... And the only crime that they did was they didn't understand. I mean, in the case of Todd, he did not understand what was happening. He couldn't believe it when his eyes were opening to the satanic world around him, that everyone was in on it. And he was telling me, and he was freaked out. I was freaked out, too, so I couldn't help him. Next thing I know, he winds up, you know, inadvertently driving his car off a cliff. And, you know, I didn't buy that at the time. And my shrink at the time told me that. Todd didn't make it, he said. And that really upset me. Because I know why. And, you know, if anyone, you know, knows me from before and listens to this podcast, they're going to know exactly what I'm saying because they know what happened too. But they're too cowardly to say anything about it. And go ahead and stay cowards, you know. It's, it's, that's been the problem the whole time. And, uh, you know, the, the problem with them is they're just scared to death because they don't want that to happen to them, so they keep their mouths shut. And so there's, there, there are honchos that keep control of all these people, right, of that that. that social bracket I was in, and they, and they, if anyone gets out of line, they're, you know, they're watched. And they're, they've lost their souls, so they're not really, so they're dead, basically. And they're being used as sock puppets to do the bidding of, uh, you know, of obviously of Satan. Their lives are not their own, in other words, and they're, and they're being used to do all kinds of things, uh, getting deeper and deeper, more and more screwed, uh, until probably if there's, you know, it wouldn't be a, a bad response to just, well, the, what I've noticed is that um, after a while when you see them again, like a reunion or something, they're not there. There's just something missing. They're missing. And if anyone um, knows about this and they can hear my voice or whatever, then maybe there's a chance for them if they understand. You know, I guess my, my job is rescuing people. People say, what's your purpose? It's like, well, to, to bring life, to bring, to, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's the purpose. I have no personal purpose. Like, find myself. <laughs> find my own happiness. That seems like the most ridiculous thing in the world. I'm not sad, at, nor, you know, uh, stupidly happy. I'm, I'm, you know, content enough to go about my business, uh, but I do deal with, with, with anxiety and trauma that... I feel that I pick up on about our society, about the idea that we're about to get into this um, global war for depopulation, and everyone's going to go, oh, let's get the ready to have a jet. Obama's going to be known as the war president. It's all kind of brewing, right, which I've been warning you about. But, I mean, there's plenty of other people warning. Oh, they were saying World War III tomorrow and all this, and I just have kind of enjoyed being more accurate than them. But, And then I told someone yesterday, I said, well, I didn't come from the earth, okay? I just want to make this very clear. And those of you who can relate, you know who you are, okay? I did not come from the earth. I can tell you this unequivocally is, is absolute truth. I didn't come from the earth. I came from up there. Now, I've said this a million times. But, you see, 
there are earth dwellers who come from the earth, you know, and they become like the pagans, the, the, the earth, they relate to it, you know what I mean? They, they, they're, they're just their way, they're just born that way. They came from here. We, you know, and I'll put, put Jeremiah in there and others, we didn't come from here. You know, so in a, in a sense, they want, ven now, the way that Jeremiah describes it is they want vengeance. But wait a second, what did Jeremiah do to them? Nothing. That's the point. But it's called vengeance. They want vengeance. And so they overturn the laws and the morals and all the stuff, the PC and all that, because they're taking vengeance. You know, I'm just assuming they're all Satanists. Why, why shouldn't I? Where's the proof to the contrary? There is none. <laughs> the real joke of it is, they're all bad. They're all guilty. Because no one will cop to it. No one will admit it. So the thing just festers and grows until now. It's just a sewer we live in. Well, great, congratulations. You wonder why? You wonder why you don't get my respect? Because look how you trash this place. Look what you've done here. I came from up there. Into the flesh for whatever reason. Hey, and by the way, not my favorite task, okay? Coming here would not be like, oh boy, I can't wait to, yeah, no. No, not at all. Not me. Maybe others, but not me. That's not me. I didn't line up and go, I volunteer. I can't wait to get that. Oh, that's fun. No, no. Now, that's why I was always, um, you know, seeking, uh, you know, more of the Buddhist philosophy because I'm trying to find the exit. Oh, I'm not alone. No, 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 no. I'm speaking to millions of people right now, just like me. You know, trying to keep us on the path because, you know, we were, if you are of the truth, you're not welcome in church. I think you found that out. Church is a ruse. It's a joke. Now, they may do stuff for the poor every now and then, but I mean, what are they hiding? That they, what about all the murders they're involved in? What about all the corruption they're involved in? What, what about the worship of Satan they're involved in? Yeah, if you're in the church, you ought to be not just giving lip service to Jesus, but actually following it. And if they did, they would be what? Persecuted. Well, but they're not. And they never will be. So that's my litmus test. And if you're not persecuted, because I mean, the people I know have been persecuted since childhood before they even knew what was going on. And I talked to someone yesterday about, they said, well, they, they, they want to kill you before you know what's going on. They said, but they can't do that because you have to make a free will decision. Otherwise, it doesn't count. And it doesn't count as a sacrifice either. Unless, the, it, right? There's, God gives time for people to make that decision somewhere. It doesn't have to be a public decision. It just has to be knowing what side you're on or whatever and saying, well, I'm going to be there, you know. Or I'm, you know, I'm not going to go with the, I don't belong with the devil, so I just don't go there. But to kill people before they know what's going on, because that, that's what they would love to do. Because when people know too much about the satanic world and their, and their practices and their secret little shameful, disgusting, uh, 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 perverted life, and it's totally perverted life, it's perverted in every single way. Their dirty, shameful, you know, sewer rat life. And, and if you get to know some of the ins and outs of it, I mean, I, I don't want to know any more than I know. I just know enough to stay away from it, right? I know enough to try to avoid it. And that's enough. So I'm no, I'm no expert. And, and, you know, I mean, I know they do, um, you know, one of, the, one of the ways they do spells and stuff is to talk about themselves in the first person, it's very, so they have a million tricks up their sleeve that I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't be able to fathom. And I don't want to make a lifetime out of studying it either because it gives me the creeps. But one method that was done to me, you know, over and over again until I got onto it, it was they talk about themselves in the first person and they talk about an affliction they have. 
what they're doing is putting that affliction on you because they create a circle by talking about themselves in the first person and then you're the target okay so they manipulate themselves as the thing in the circle because um, witchcraft is all about manipulating the thing in the circle to, to represent the target that they're after outside the circle got me are you with me so far so they so one method they have since the whole world is a circle they don't need you know I mean you know if they want to draw a pentagram or whatever that's fine but I mean it's not necessary they 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 everything they do is ever at all their sacrifice everything is in public right oh they have their eyes wide shut moments too but I'm just saying most of it goes on on a daily basis they go up to you and say wow I'm really feeling lousy you know just no energy and you can tell, I mean, there's a guile that you can detect when they're doing that, of insincerity or being too glib. And when you see that happening in that way, um, then, you know, you rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ, and you send that back immediately into their face, times whatever magnitude the Lord will allow, because you have the authority to, 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 to crush that person at that point. And that's exactly what you're going to do, because, number one, they're never going to repent understand that and I just will point to the numbers because all all these people are so deceiving when they say oh let's go sing kumbaya and and oh we must pray for that person because eventually they're gonna get no no the majority of them are never going to change that's what you don't understand so I am forbidden to pray for people that won't repent I pray for people that the Lord says, and there are quite a few that, that are you know, undecided in the valley of decision or influenced by the witchcraft or even dabblers, but the Lord will point out that one and that one and that one. Not all of them. And people that pray that way are themselves in for a body slam, and they deserve it gr greatly. I'm in no mood today. I'm in no mood today to, to screw around with any of this stuff. You're going to get it straight up what it is, you know, uh, for the umpteenth millionth time. And you do with it, if you want to go search YouTube for all the uh, Illuminati insiders who have got a story to tell, guess what? If it doesn't line up with what I'm saying, they are full of it. And there's plenty of people trying to get some internet fame and, and whatnot, becoming an Im Illuminati insider that's coming out to tell their story. When you hear the word Illuminati right there, red flag, because nobody calls it that who's on the inside. Nobody. Illuminati is just a term they use for marketing, you know, like, like Jay-Z or something, and they put Illuminati symbol. It's not Illuminati anything. That, you know, if you want to say it's Masonic, fine, but that's such a broad term. Masonic, they're all Masons then, the whole world. They're all ma ma Mason this, Mason that. No, they're, they're, they're just Satanists, that's all. They sold their souls to Satan because they were being pressured, because they couldn't take it, because they got broken down, because they wanted to be famous, because they want money, because blah, 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 whatever reason, because the carrot, the stick, you know, they either get the carrot or the stick and they're not, they're, they want the carrot and they don't want the stick, so they go ahead and do it. But when they do it, it's, there's a kind of a thing where they, they go where they belong. In other words, they, they can't do it unless they're meant to do it. Right? There's some that just aren't born that way. And there's some that are. And then there's some people that made a mistake. And they're, you know, toiling in the wrong place. And they're, they're the prodigal sons and daughters. Those are very, very rare. Because usually they become sacrifices. That's why you don't see them. Oh, they know. <laughs> yeah, they know. they know. They know everything the demons know. The human hosts, which is what they are, which is why... You don't give them the respect you give to a human being. I don't care what status they are in life. They're not there, man. They're not there. They have a face you see in public, but there's nobody home. Get me? Understand that. Yes, they get great talents from the demonic realm in music or dancing or acting. Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely true. You know, I guess that would be the temptation part of it. People so desperate for fame, 
so desperate for, for, for fortune, so desperate for power, they'll do anything, anything. And funny, I, I know people that sold their souls at Hollywood that, and they still have to run around trying to, you know, sleep with every producer they can and, 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 and you know, they're, st they're on the hustle in that way and they're still, so that means, you know, uh, anything goes, sex with everybody, and, uh, but, but the reason they don't get all the way to being famous is because, you know, I mean, let's, let me just put it this way, uh, you know, sacrificing animals <laughs> doesn't quite get it, you know, uh, Satan requires blood sacrifice, and if you're not up to it, then uh, you're not, you know, you're going to be at the back of the bus. Oh, they could do it collectively or whatever, but I mean, you know, there is that dirty little secret. And um, it's not really a secret, it's like an open secret, right? Satanic religion requires uh, human sacrifice. And, and, and certain orgiastic practices, and, um, and uh, you know, kids to be sexualized early to get, get in, and they're there to service the adults, and it's, it's, it's just systematic. It's, it's, it's almost like um, it's a system, you know, just like the government is a system, just like, you know, and it involves uh, every uh, institution upon the earth. A great world you, you, you got born, I guess you got born into hell, a uh, world run by Satan. That would be hell to me, but I guess people think there's an even worse thing later. Um... Anyway, so that was it, you know, on that, on that, uh, that, 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 that set up, that uh, being invited to a thing and then having people you don't even know, they all turn on you and mock you and laugh at you and, you know, in an attempt to, 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 obviously they were trying to break me down so they could either, I would commit suicide, I think that was the, the goal there. Because other kids had committed suicide, so and that's what they would do. But I lived on. You know, they got close. I mean, I, I was pretty close to death more than a few times. But, you see, I didn't... The, the death would have been a waste because I didn't understand what they were doing, what they were up to. I couldn't understand these kids being so evil. What, what, what changed them? What, what are they operating on? And it's, it's really the way you look at it, the, the way you, you clear, you know, you have to forgive them because you have to understand it's what's in them that's doing it. The kids are just like stupid sock puppets. They, they, if, the, if the demon left them, they would just fall on the floor and die. You know, there's just nothing there. They're being animated by, you know, and organized and, and corrupted and exploited by the, the demonic realm, which means they're all possessed. And, you know, so they're, they're, what they say, what they do, it's just coming out of them. They're being used. So that side of things was used to come at me and, you know, the demonic realm has, is timeless, so it, it knows everything that's going to happen in the future and who you are and where you came from and everything you do and everything you say, they hear it all. So if they know the Zeph report is coming, let's say and that exposed a bunch of this stuff, uh, and now it's all over the internet and, and basically it's pretty much an open secret who, who has sold their soul to the devil, which is basically what it is. And, that, and that's, it used to be mocked if you talk like that. Oh, God, that's a wacko tinfoil, you know, come on, you know. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's been the game all along. And, you know, it's been a nod-wink thing all along. And now it's, you know, it's pretty much mainstream who these assholes are. And, um, you know, most of the public has just gone along with it. And, unfortunately, in, in a lot of that public goes to church. It, it's the, the, what I would say to them is, what for? You don't get anything out of it. You haven't repented. You're still with the devil. Uh, you think you're going to get some pass. The Lord's going to throw your ass in hell, period. It's a waste of your time. No, but you don't understand. I got my business there, and I got my, uh, I'm having an affair with this gal. and I, you know, uh, uh, Sure, I understand. It's just another, another chance for the collective to get together and grind on each other while, you, while the ship sinks irrevocably. So what I've been about here on Earth is to tell people about life, living, you know, eternal life. Uh, you know, when you die, that's just the beginning. Your life blossoms. 
you know, um, you, you go home, well, in my case, back there to the throne of God, up there. The firmament is, I, I have just in my own mind, I just say the firmament is the throne. You know, when I see the stars out there, that is the throne. Anyway, um, you know, to, to, to be restored, to not be a slave, to not be uh, used by parasites, to live my own life rather than someone else's, to be able to be free. Now, obviously, I'm a bit cranky today, so freedom comes with a cost. You know, and that is, you know, they throw rocks at you, and if you know, and they traumatize you. And uh, you know, I was talking with someone that was saying, "Well, most people don't make it. You know, that are trying to be free, they don't, they they die. You know, they don't make it. If it isn't one thing that gets them, it's another. They just they just don't make it. So people go with the devil because they don't want to die. You understand? So they that's the only way they can keep on." Well, then say it. You can't do that because then, I know. You see, what people don't know and what Satanists don't know is they are dead, okay? They're dead. The only way they can live is as parasites off the living, which are the lambs. And if you take out too many lambs, then they can't live. And they would be dead or they, would, they wouldn't even be here. Uh, so they live at the pleasure or, the, or because... The Lord allows the wheat and the tares to grow together. He allows the lambs to be here. That's the only way they could live. If there were no lambs, there would be no Satanists. They would not be on the planet. They would not be here. They can't feed off each other, and they know it. Because they're dead. It's like feeding off a dead carcass. You know, it's, it, What's dead is dead. It's dead. And let me explain something to you. No, there's not going to be a repentance for most of these people because they're twice dead. Meaning they made the decision to die, i.e. jump in there with Satan, right? And, 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 the, and the brilliant Jim Morrison thing of break on through the other side, they just thought that was brill. brill. So they did that and then they um, uh, gave their consent and their free will over and that's Strike two, the second death, is when you believe that there is no other, you know, you have to formally reject God and you have to then think that the only God is Satan. That's the only God. And then, you know, you don't say Satan because that's a derogatory term, so you would say, you would more try to call him Gaia or, you know, whatever, some kind of, you know, um, like a god, you know, and, uh, and, and worship him as a god. And when that finally takes place in your heart, you have now crossed the point of no return, my friend, and you is going to the second death, the lake of fire, burning fire, brimstone, burning forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, with full knowledge of what you did with total regret, wishing that the five minutes you had on earth, you spent it differently. <laughs> Oh, but you can't get that moment back now, can you? So a guy like me is here trying to warn you about that so you don't make that fatal error. Because it is true. It's true. Just like they go, oh, I don't think people sell their souls to the devil. I, that's a rumor about fame and fortune and the devil. That's a popular urban myth. Well, it's no urban myth. It's a Faustian myth, if you will. Uh, it's, 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 it's an age-old story. But it's literally true. It is literally true. Most people, though, when they sell out, sell out is the word, okay? When they sell out, most people, of course, sell too cheap. <laughs> they don't become famous. <laughs> they don't really get much in the way of money. And they don't really get the, 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 the sweetheart they wanted. And they don't really have the kids they really wanted. They're just stuck. And they're on their way to burn. And the irony is, they lead pretty good lives. They don't do anything wrong to people. They follow the rules. They follow the laws. They pay their taxes. They vote. They, they go to church on Sunday. They don't think they're doing anything wrong, deserving of some fate like that. I mean, my God, what kind of a psychopath God would do something like that to generally decent people? But there's just one little problem. 
they sold their souls. I mean, don't have a, you know, it's really not about respecting someone and what they do. It's really you have to be in possession of that thing called the soul in order to then, you know, live. You can't live without a soul, friend. If it's sold, it's sold. It's gone. You're dead. The soulless ones are dead. That's why the Grateful Dead called themselves the Grateful Dead. They thought that was funny, that no one would ever figure out what they meant by that. Well, it's like you don't need an IQ of more than about 80 to figure that out, or 3, or 12. You don't need to be one of them to not wink figure that out. And we complicate this so much, you know. Um, we complicate all this so much about who they are and this. They, as I've always said, and by the way, my guests on the Zephyr Report never cop to this. They never told you the truth. I said, and the reason I had to throw them off my show was because it's everywhere. It's everything, okay? And they were saying, well, it's over here. It's over there. It's those elites over there, the Bilderbergers. They're all Satanists. Or the, or it's the Rothschild, the, the banking cartel. It's the Jews. It's the Vatican. No, my friend. It's everything and everyone, everywhere, all the time. Now, that really sets you back on your heels when you just consider that what I said is absolutely true. Then you'll realize... Oh my God, I'm surrounded. This is horrible. I need help. Lord, I know I've been a horrible sinner, but I mean, I need your help, Father, please. See, you see that response? You see, when your eyes are open, that's the only logical response there is because you're screwed every which way except that way and you tend to go where you're not screwed. You better publish this widely because I don't. you're never going to get me on fire like this again. I just had a hard last 15 hours or so, very hard, tough, very tough, you know, really tough. And they say, well, you know, these, they're all mad that you're not dead, you know, they want to take, well, but for what reason? I have no animosity toward them. I, they don't really even really matter to me. I'm, you know, I'm, it's not like I, I'm against them. I don't really want any, I'm not really, if there's vengeance, let the Lord have his vengeance. But I'm not at war with them. They seem to be at war with God they want to, and they want to take out vengeance on us because they hate God and it just makes no sense. Because what they're going to do to themselves is ensure eternal suffering on themselves and wishing wishing, wi hoping for another chance and wishing they didn't do what they did. You know, when the phone stops ringing, Mr. Celebrity, which I've grown up with all the celebrities, so I mean, you're nothing special to me. But, <laughs> but you know what? No envy. <laughs> oh, don't envy you, buddy. Yeah, because now you see the phone stopped ringing and... Uh, the, 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 the contract stopped coming and, and you know, if you want your career to go somewhere, you got to, you know, maybe kill your wife or something, you know what I mean? I mean, it's something that radical, uh, you know, or, or you get, but now you're kind of old and feel, you can't really do it. You wouldn't, your conscience is kicked in again. So you can't really do something like that. You just really, <clears throat> you, 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 you're just really hamstrung now because you're not going to go, you know, even if, in satanic circles, of course, when they have these little accidents that happen, you know, they get, there's no investigation, you know, if, if you're on the inside, you understand that, right? Just like in the Masons, they, 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 they don't testify against each other in court, it's the same thing, same deal. Only it's global, and it's everywhere, it's everything, it's everyone all the time. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go. Da -dun -da -dun -da -dun, Saturn. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go. Da -da 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 -dun, Saturn. Okay. And I'll tell you, uh, it's a long way to a five, uh, to a cocktail hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, for my many infirmities, and ouch, I got a lot of them. And, 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 and some of these are just basically, uh, you know, see, here's where I come at it. 
I didn't understand when they were doing that stuff when I was 16. I didn't understand. It happened, that incident was repeated maybe hundreds of times in different ways. You know, just basically almost on a daily basis, okay? And it was, and I just, I, I finally got traumatized to the point where I was, I lived in a, in a fairy tale, you know, because I couldn't handle reality, you know, so I, you know, I was really hurt very badly, you know, to the point where most people never come back from, from that kind of hurt. But it was, you know, it will never get outed, you know, or, or prosecuted because it's just life. Well, who am I going to blame? You know, I can blame myself for, you know, I cursed the womb too. Jeremiah's the man right now. He's, he's, he's our leader right now because see, he, he laid it down perfectly with what we go back and listen to my reading of it again. And thank you, Gary, for sending it to me because that just is perfect. It's just right for me, you know. He's saying, and let's just go back because, you see, everything I'm saying today is in the context of Scripture. I have scriptural authority to tell you exactly what I'm telling you. Isn't that nice to know that it's confirmed by God's word? Once again. It's just so amazing how synchronous this all is, you know, getting the scripture in the, my email and then having it be the exact thing I needed for today. It's just that's the way God works. I just love that. I just love that. O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. Okay, I am in derision daily, and everyone mocks me. Daily. And I haven't done, let me just channel Jeremiah for a second, if you will. I know, no, I'm not, I'm not, not into that uh, witchy channeling stuff, but let me just, uh, Lord, I did nothing to them, but they mocked me. I'm just trying to go about my way trying to act normal, you know, trying to just not make a fuss, and they just mock me anyway. They don't even know me, Lord. They don't know who I am. I never broken bread with them. I don't know who they are, but they know me and they mock me. You know, I curse, I curse the day I was born because it seemed that I was born just to be um, stabbed. Now, let's get back to the actual word here. What does he say? Cursed be the day when I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed, says Jeremiah. See, it's exactly what I said from my own heart, being confirmed by the word with the exact words that fit the exact situation. Uh, and, and we can take from Jeremiah... You know, we can take from Jeremiah here. He's complaining to God because he feels like he's, you know, he's cursed and, and they win. And he's being kicked all over the place. And he doesn't, you know, because he's, he's God's. So he's going back to his father and saying, well, are you just going to let me be kicked around like that? I mean, I cursed the womb then. I cursed the day I was born because it's been nothing but suffering since that point. Why bring me into the earth? They're just going to have their, you know, who am I? Further, the question is begged. Who am I to you, Lord? And who are they? And who am I? And what's the difference? Why this? And then you see, then you start to understand. Because then the Lord will point out that no, you're not all the same <laughs> on the earth. No, you're not all the same. There are some over here and there's some there. I have mine and then there's these. And, uh, and they want to beat the crap out of you for vengeance, even if you didn't intend any harm to them, even if you've been friends with them, even if you've given them gifts, and, and I have, even though you've, you've, you've blessed them, and I have, even though you've prayed for their healing and they were healed, and I have. They turn and put a knife right in your back as a thank you card, and it has happened exactly that way to me. Just to the T, to the T. No differentiation between the Bible and my experience. None. Absolutely the same.
You know, they can confuse you on the internet with all kinds of talk about all this, but the thing is, Jeremiah did not ask to be Jeremiah. That's why he's cursing the womb. He did not ask to be, you know, a prophet of God, a spokesperson for God, a mouthpiece, because I'm sure his life wasn't just, you know, the writings would have taken a little time, but his life went on daily. He was speaking words that didn't get written down, right? He was God's, you know, talking about God and God this and God that and God's will, and if you don't change that, or I can see right what you're doing right there is wrong, you know, going around doing his thing, right? Just being, uh, 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 you know, after God and just being gods, you know? I just, everyone knows Jeremiah is God, so, you know, it's just, right, he's just born that way. He was born that way, so let's kick him and shame him and hurt him. Uh, because he was born that way, because he was born that way. And the churches teach the exact opposite. We're all the same, but then we, we're all in the valley of decision, and then we need to... No, we're not in the valley of decision, idiot. Uh, by the time we even come of age, we've already pretty much been divided into what side we're going to be on. So that's wrong, Mr. Liar. Liar. Liars. If any of you really want God and want the truth, you should listen, to the, you should listen up here. Because you, you're getting it. I mean, it's not, it's not, you nice. It's not all wrapped up with a bow. It's 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 damned inconvenient for some. Because it might alter their lifestyle if they heed. I know. I don't know. I had to alter mine. Well, God separated me from them because they were just kicking me all over the place, and I I kept trying to get them to like me and. I didn't know what the deal was because I'm, I'm likable and I'm smart and gosh darn it, people like me. Well, they do like me until, until this thing comes up. And then they, they can be friendly one second and then the next thing you know, they're, they're, you know the stiletto's out. I, I, you know, I, I just, I have always been vexed and hurt by this. Hurt, I hurt bad. You know, from the betrayal of people. You know, and then, but they'd say, well, I, I had to do it or I'd get, I'd get in trouble. Why? Because they own me. So I can't be your friend. See? You can't blame me. The best thing you can do is avoid me. Okay, well, maybe I'll take that under advisement now at long last and, you know, but all the scars I do have, I can't get rid of. You see, I realize that I will never heal from the wounds. A lot of people say, well, I'm healing from these. No, I'm, when one starts healing, there's a few more that get put there. In my case, it's, it's, it's this, this constant, you know, what I get a lot of the time is this constant, you know, witchcraft, spells, bad vibes, all this stuff thrown constantly because of the vengeance on, you know, wanting to be taken on God. So what better way to do it than, you know, if someone's speaking the truth, then they're, they're, they're the enemy, attack, you know, kill them. But God has his own timing. You see, what, you see what, they, what you don't understand is when you finally see the truth for what it is and see how it's everything and everyone all the time, everywhere, then you go, gosh, how am I still walking around? And that brings you to complete, total faith. Because you realize, logically, and it's proven to you, logically, that there's no way, logically, that you could uh, be walking around, logically, with the odds, you know, with the numbers being lopsided as they are. Just stands to reason. You know, most people would not take that bet that you'd be, right? But God's people tend to go all the way through and even live long lives. And how is that possible if, uh, well, I know the prophets lived to be, to where they had long beards and they lived to kind of be elderly, but then they got, they, they got it in the end, you know, anyway. And of course, the thing is, is when you're old like that and they, they, if they do you in that way, um, you know, you're, you know, whatever, you, you, you go home. You know, you're, you're, you're not attached to the world. You know, it's not that precious of a sacrifice, but 
you know, again, it's just depriving God of, you know, to, just trying anything they can to, to, you know, mess with God. You have an entire Washington, D.C. doing that, serving Satan. And coming up with any way they can to hurt you. And the public, uh, most of them worshiping Satan. And you're being done in by the people that also worship Satan. So you see, they end up doing each other in because, you know, that's just, that's just what happens, you know. You reap what you sow, baby. God is no respecter of persons. I hope you understand that. You know, if you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. You're going to live by the satanic and do bad things to people. You're going to have bad things done to you, period. And it's going to happen in this life. As soon as that, you know, five years, ten years run that you get. I know one guy that sold a soul of the devil. He got, he got three movies in a row, you know, as an actor. And he got about four or five years where he did make, you know, enough money to sustain himself in, in cushy Malibu. You know what I mean? He made his... You know, some millions had some royalties from, but that was it. It was well, as soon as the thing was up the, after the three, uh, uh, and they were big. It's enough to sustain him, but uh, the ticket was punched. That was it. So now it's going to be forever looking back on those three movies or the whatever that little glimmer of fame and fortune with that little fifteen seconds of of pop, and. Um, you know, he'll just kind of lapse into obscurity, but, you know, he's got money to live on, and I guess he can raise his children, and without that corruption, uh, he's got everybody else in Malibu that are all supporting that sort of thing anyway, you know, because uh, that's how they roll out there. It's like they ruin the whole beach, and just, you know, I mean, it's almost, like you look at a place like Malibu, it's a beautiful place, you know, but there are a lot of beautiful places, but, I mean, it's beautiful. But then you look at, at who's there, and then you're going, Oh, really? So they're not, there's, it's really, I, I like to call Malibu like a, a ghost town. Because there's no one really living there. Just all ghosts. Um, y you know, it's a small community, and so, you know, they frown on things like, you know, following God or the truth. Or, you know, that, that would not be popular there. Look what they did to poor Mel Gibson. He's kind of on the truth, right? Definitely, I would say that he's, he's, more lamb, you know, he's definitely not one of them. Sticks out like a sore thumb. And they, you know, they just pretty much did him and his career in. You know, he's still there, able to do stuff, but I mean, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been shown that he's not one of them, and they're making sure that he knows it. Even Robert Downey Jr. came to his rescue at the Beverly Hilton uh, during a, some sort of award thing. You know, they love to give each other awards. It's, it's just, you know, making each other feel great about, you know, drinking human blood. So he's, I mean, I'm being facetious, but you know, it's, it's really sad, you know, as I try to make a joke out of it. Um, but he's saying that, isn't there any forgiveness for Mel Gibson? And no, there isn't. He self-produced with his own money, uh, the, you know, uh, Jesus and the passion. And, you know, I mean, uh, there'll never be forgiveness for that. Because that's the truth, the life, and the way. That is the way. And no servant's greater than his master. Look what they did to him. Okay, so, you know, you've got the, what we call gang stalking, which is just simply persecution is a better word, folks. Persecution is the word you should be using. And, and yes, they persecute you, knowing that eventually at some point you give your life to the Lord. But before that, you, you know, they, they try to preemptively get you. So there's if you really belong to God, you're persecuted right from the get-go. Uh, most people I know that said they're big-time Christians, they were never persecuted either before or after. And that's how I know they ain't, you know. It's, it's you know, when suddenly a group of people you don't know, they, they, they all start coming at you in a coordinated manner and they don't know each other, then you know you've, you're, you're, you're on, you know, the only place you can go is the Lord. Uh, well, yes, they bet on you to see what you'll do. The, the Jesus door, the suicide, uh, you know, or, or be, you know, if, if they can lure you into a space where they can get away with taking you out, they'll do that too. But usually that's just, you know, that, that's something that, that frightens them. 
that's why only the top people, uh, you know, people that want to stay on top, they're, they're, you know, they've, they're involved in. Look at, the, you know, when you look at, say, what comes to mind is like Bill Clinton and the, and the, and the you know, the Clinton Chronicles, the Clinton death count of all the people around, you know, just, just kind of almost ridiculous. Uh, you know, people that knew something, saw something, could say something, you know. Same thing happened with Obama. Same thing happens over and over if you pay attention. Um, how do you know that those aren't just sacrifices, too? You know, not just getting rid of evidence, but, uh, you know, how do you know that they're just, oh, the helicopter went down, oh, my God. You know, how do you know those aren't just sacrifices? How about, um, you, you know, when you have war, how about the 30 uh, SEALs? that knew all about the raid on the, the fake Bin Laden raid, and then they were taken out, right? That was 30 people. 30 highly trained uh, and revered soldiers. That's dirty, dirty, dirty. Now, don't think those people uh, who survived in SEAL Team 6, don't think they all don't know. They all know. Let me say this very carefully to you. They all know what happened, and they all know why, but they're keeping their mouths shut because they're scared to death because... You know, they were just intimidated. Like, if you say anything, if you do anything, it's going to happen to you. Because they all talk, so they all know. Everybody in the military knows, you know, and, and that, 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 that there was a purge going on, that this, this sick, whatever, Obama is getting rid of uh, patriotic uh, generals. And, you know, and basically just, just anything he could do to do harm to people, that's, he exists to, to, to hurt others and boost himself and lavish himself endlessly uh, while deliciously dining on the trauma of others. I mean, he, here's a perfect example of a guy doing that. Could he repent? He will repent. Hey, I don't say everybody. I mean, I, I can't speak for the rest of his staff or all the other people. I mean, you know. But him and Bush and, and Clinton and all that, they're no different. They're the same. You know, they're all the same. Uh, it begs the question why Billy Graham would be hanging around the Bush family. That's very interesting. Uh, just, just another cover-up, I, I guess. I mean, you know, these, you know, the society is what it is. The world is what it is. You know? But don't stop there. You know, those are just kind of throwing out some famous names. Um, if you were to say, well, it's everything and everyone all the time, then you'd be 100% uh, more accurate than the Illuminati survivors who are coming out to tell the story about how evil it is in Hollywood. That's ridiculous because it's, it's just as evil in Phoenix, Arizona. It's just as evil in, in, in um, you know, in, uh, <laughs> in, in Fairbanks, Alaska, you know. It, it doesn't matter where it is. It's no different anywhere. It's the same thing in, you know, the middle of Kansas, you know, hanging around the 7-Eleven, going to the, uh, to the, uh, the, you know, whatever, to the club to drink a few beers and listen to some music. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And that thing will kill you. I mean, kill you, kill your spirit, dead. Dead as a doornail. Well, now, Ralph, the spirit and the soul are two different things. Yeah, I understand you want to make that distinction that the spirit animates the body and the soul is the thing. The, the body could still remain animated while the soul is gone. I mean, I understand that if you want to make those decisions. But I, you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying what's ever inside you is shot dead, boom, gone. And then you exist as a soul-scalped individual uh, part of the collective that's taken over by another entity and then run around like some kind of cheap uh, marionette. Well, you know, people that get used that way, possessed that way, and they get used, you know who, who talked about this more eloquently than I ever will and who said the very same thing was Father Malachi Martin. I mean, you know, he's gone now. But when he was, I think, on the Art Bell show, he uh, when he was on the Dark Side show, I mean Art Bell, I mean the Dark Side, I mean Art Bell. Uh, he uh, he said that you know people are perfectly possessed. That the majority of Americans, he was I think referring to Americans specifically, 
are the perfectly possessed. They're all, in other words, they all sold their soul to the devil, the middle class. That's what he was saying. The majority, everywhere all the He said it beautifully. It's everything, everywhere, all the time. And that's, I'm just saying what he said. You know, I'm saying, and, and that America has a real problem. And that most people have sold their soul to Satan. And it's formal. Because they have to know exactly what they did. And they act like there is no such thing as Satan. I'm an atheist, they tell me. And it's like, you're no atheist if you believe in Satan or you do witchcraft or you do any of this stuff. You know, if you're doing any of that stuff, you have sold your soul to the devil. You know, more than likely. You know, I mean, some people kind of stumble into something innocently and then they repent of it. I, that's fine. But, I mean, people that are down for it, you know, they're the twice dead. They have, you know, God is, to them, God is Satan. And when that transition is made and there's a formal rejection of God, that's the first the first death is the rejection of God and the soul. Because you see, the soul is like an extension of God, right? So you, when the soul is, then God's out of there. Don't you see, when people sell their soul to the devil, what happens is that the biggest thing they've done is they've killed themselves. And, what, you know, the vengeance has already been taken out on them. And now they're being used in the army of Satanists to, you know, to deceive people into um, staying in this prison and being recycled and not going with the Lord and not, not getting out of here because they want to keep everybody on the farm and because they can't live without, you know, without living people to feed on. And, and I, I keep telling you that, that the, the whole world exists to, so that, you know, the intact ones it's like in the Maze Runner. Well, I like the Maze Runner so much, it's, it's a metaphor about all this. Uh, the Maze Runner is about, and it's more clear in the Scorch Trials, the new one, which I highly recommend. Uh, it's really about the, the dead preying on the living. That's what it's really all about. The zombie movies were, in a sense, of another metaphor, same thing. They Live was kind of more literal, but same thing. You know. So what I mean by that is, um, those who have sold their souls must now feed. The vampire stories are about the same thing, that's right. They have to feed. Now, if there's not a supply of lambs, then they can't feed. So you see, the lambs are very important to them to gather them around. Otherwise, they perish. And in the maze runner, if they don't get the serum to fight this disease that kills people, then they can't live and they need the ones who are immune, immune, meaning lambs, right? It's a metaphor. Uh, they have to draw their blood so they, can ha they have to feed literally on that blood and tissue and other things. So they have to find these people and feed off them, literally off all their body parts. And they have them, you know, in these little rows of, they have them suspended in rows. I'm sorry, I'm spoiling them over here. But they have them, you know, hooked up to these machines, these tubes, you know, in, a, in a non semi-conscious state while they're being, you know, while their fluids are being sucked and the tissues being sucked out of them. And they have to have, to find those immune, and they put them in comatose states and warehouse them, you know, in, in lines and lines of these bodies to let the ones who should die live. Go back to Ezekiel 13. Go back to Ezekiel 13. Uh, quickly. I'm on, this is, you'll never see me on a roll like this again, so you might as well really enjoy it. Ezekiel 13, Ezekiel 13, for those of you who thought I'd lost my fire. <laughs> no, I'm the same guy, man. Same one that loves the Lord. Okay. Let me get to Ezekiel 13, please. Is it not letting me? Oh, it's crashing. Isn't that interesting? Uh, okay, well, I got to... Okay, here we go. It's in... Don't tell me. 
So Ezekiel would be under E. I hate that. I want it to go by the actual chapters rather than alphabetically, but that's fine. And we're going to go to about verse 17. Okay. <laughs> this reminds me of someone. Woe unto the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? And this is really about false prophets, but it's about, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's also, you know, symbolically about witchcraft. It's about, you know, it's about the whole thing we're talking about today. Uh, so here's, here's the thing. Um, so the people that should die in this story, the maze runner, are the people that are infected, right? And they should just die. But because they feed on the living, in other words, they have to gather more and more and more humans that are immune, and they search the world over for them to bring them in and hook them up to tubes and kill them so that they can live. The ones who are well, who should live, are killed, and the ones who should die live. And that resonance that the story has is why James Dashner's um, trilogy, which is The Maze Runner, it's a trilogy of books, why it's so popular, because it resonates on a very deep level with, with, uh, about humanity. And, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, he's, if, if, he, if he believes in God. I would, wouldn't be surprised at all, because he, this story is very biblical, in a sense, you know. Um, but yes, uh, you, you know, uh, people are probably laughing. Well, he sold his soul to get that job. Well, fine, but okay, the people, can they do good work? Yes. Can they function in society? Yes. Can they serve other people? Yes. Can they, but, but there's this problem, you know, right? And it's a problem that I don't have. And it's a problem that all of you don't have. But they have it. And because they're so angry, and I mean they're angry, they are so mean and so angry and such horrible people that they want to actually go after innocent ones and traumatize them. I mean, that's just, that's just right off the bat, that's bad. And right off the bat, that's going to come back to get you one day. I can't make it any more clear, you know. Um, so, while it's kind of interesting, look at celebrities who've sold their soul to the devil, looking at the before and after pictures of Beyonce and, you know, and Tom Cruise, and I saw some video doing that. That's useless. That's making everybody think that it's just something that has to do with Hollywood. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's disinfo, man. It's everything, everywhere, all the time. More like what Father Malachi Martin said in the beginning when he said, you know, America, like the American middle class, are mainly the perfectly possessed. Yes, there you go. Or go back to the story by Nathaniel Hawthorne, Young Goodman Brown, which I've mentioned again and again to you, and you don't read. But go back, try to, it's online for free, you know, and read that. In, 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 in Young Goodman Brown, it's everything and everyone all the time except for Goodman Brown, which is why I got his name Goodman, because he was a good man, and he was punished for it and banished from the town for just being normal. Then you start to get at the experience that I had growing up and other people like me had. I mean, you know, racism, I'm sorry, I've experienced much worse than any racism you could ever imagine. Uh... What else? You know, that's when I see people complaining about racism. It's like, uh, you, you don't even know what persecution is, buddy. Sorry. You just got a chip on your shoulder, and that's, that's, that's fine. I had one for a long time myself until I understood what was going on. But, of course, all these arguments for racism involve very stupid people doing very stupid things. And I just, you know, my life, you know, is, I don't have that many more 
runs around the track, so I want to make every moment count, not get caught up in stupid arguments and stupid things. You know, try to stay, to pick my battles more carefully, rather than indiscriminately, as I did in my youth. You know, well, in my youth, I, you know, here's the decision I made when I was 16, and I was in total sorrow, and I was so sad, and I was so isolated, and I was so hurt by, you know, something I so did not deserve. You know, there was no justice. It was just, it was just, you know, um, and it just made me feel like, well, I could never go out of the house again, or I could never, I mean, I just felt so terrible. You have no idea. I felt so alone. And there was no help, because everywhere I turned, they were, you know, was one of them anyway. So it was like, and they would all tell me that I'm the one with the problem, that I'm the one that's bad, that I'm the one that needs to, to change, that I'm the one that needs to learn something, that I'm the one causing the trouble, that I'm the one, you know, so I got the impression I was just the worst thing in the world, I can't show my face. I got the impression I should never leave, go outside. I, I, should, I, I should banish myself to, the, to some dark dungeon somewhere. You see, even that was a form of trauma and harassment. You know, lying to you over and over and making you think you're something you're not. I was not a bad kid. That They wanted me to think that. But they were, because they are the majority, and the majority of them had sold their souls to Satan, literally, functionally, and structurally. And that is the source of the conflict, and that is why they gang stalk, and that is why they lie. And that is the only reason that it happens. The only reason. People say, well, the real gang stalking happened in electronic harassment because people have the wrong political view. No, that's not true. It's all stemming from the spiritual battle, and uh, the electronic harassment is a manifestation of it. But it is not the root cause, no that someone voted the wrong way. No, absolutely not. Now, what can you do with the knowledge that you have from here today? Well, first of all, the Word of God will now make sense, which is good. Um, and you, you know, you gotta go with the Lord. I mean, there's, do, do you have, <laughs> the way I paint it, you have no other option. When you hear the real truth, you, it's, it's more like time is precious, time is short, better get on with it. And if we do have a World War III, of, you know, a pre-planned nuclear whatever, uh, that you're talking about, you know, all of us being dead anyway, and, 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 and very quickly, and not having a chance to really think this thing through. So you better, you know, die in the Lord, because if you die in your sin, you, 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 you've, you've, you've lost the opportunity for, for freedom. You've lost the opportunity to live. Uh, it would be very sad. And the way I put it, there is not one person who hears my voice. I don't think even one uh, that isn't repenting right now. Um, once you hear this, uh, it, it just, it just, you can see very clearly that there just isn't any other option. I mean, you can keep whistling by the graveyard, I suppose. Uh, there's not one person in the world, either on Satan's side, God's side, this side, that side, doesn't matter what side, everyone agrees with me. I don't need to know all the ins and outs of Satanism. I don't want to know, and I don't pursue it, and I don't study it. I don't want to know. I know enough, okay? It's a uh, death cult that kills people and covers it up and lies and, uh, you know, has supernatural powers to make people blossom into superheroes uh, so that they can be the celebrities and whatnot and keep fooling the public that this is the way to go and uh, keep them all going off the cliff indefinitely so we have a good food supply forever and ever, amen. I, I can't deal with that. I don't need to know more. I, I know a little bit about, like, you know, when they're throwing spells on you, they'll, they'll come talk in the first person about something they're targeting you with. But you can discern that, can't you? When they do, they do that a lot. You can discern that, right? You know, they'll bring up a topic, but it's meant to have a certain effect on you, you know? Um, or they bring up something that only, that would spook you in some way. Uh, this is all pre-planned warfare, you know? It's, it's, you've, you gotta, you know, you gotta get to the point where that doesn't bother you anymore. You know where it's coming from, you know who the enemy is, you know what the enemy is up to. And the people that are around you are being used by the enemy to attack you. Yeah, that's right.
Well, the thing is, I go out, I enjoy the sunshine, I'm, I'm, I'm very visible. You know, I, I very much rely on God's promises to me. And if he says don't go somewhere, I don't go there, you know. But I mean, basically, uh, he, he, he wants me, and I think you, visible. Not invisible, not hiding in shame. We're the last people that should be hiding in shame. Don't you understand? That they should be hiding in shame. For, for all the, you know, for, look, be, just look at the world. I'd be ashamed. I, mean, I thought John Boehner should have been ashamed, you know, to show his face down there. But they don't because they're the majority. They make it okay. They should be ashamed, but they're not. Well, he sold out the American people. I mean, you know, it's real simple. He sold out the whole nation, you know, and, and, and they all did. And uh, they should all be in jail. You know, they should all be ashamed. And none of them are in jail. None of them are ashamed. Look at Hillary Clinton breaking the law right and left whole trail of bodies here and there and murders and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, illegal activity, you know, as far as the eye can see, nothing. Because they're all in the same cult. That's why. They're all Satanists, okay? Do I have to spell it out for you? People say, what about Hillary? Is she going to go to prison? I said, no, she isn't. Because they're all in the same cult. They're all in the same club. They don't turn on each other like that. I'll tell you, if Obama doesn't get this place lit up with nuclear world WW3, uh, Hillary sure will, you know, Hillary will be hell. It'll be, for people living in this country, it will be, I can just, you know, use my discernment here. It will be hell. It should be called, they'll be calling her Hillary because it will be nothing but hell. Uh, you'll love these. You'll wish you could go back to the days. You'll miss Obama plenty, believe me. It would be pure hell. And the people, like around here, they're all voting for Hillary. You know, all the Hispanic um, Southwest is all voting for Hillary. The majority of them. And I said, well, they're going to sign their own death warrant. And I said, well, they don't care. They're going to vote for her anyway. They don't think that far ahead, you know, Hispanics. Or most people. I don't want to be racist. But most people, the you know, people who are voting for Hillary... This is what I mean, not his Hispanic sort of one, but the people that are voting for Hillary and vote Democrat in general, they don't, um, I'm not voting if, the only way I would vote is if Donald Trump is on the thing and, you know, I'm not saying he's perfect, I'm not saying he hasn't danced with the devil, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to know, okay, but I know that God chose him for this time to be the great unmasker, he's debasking people right and left. And at the same time, he's very nice to the press, and he's, he's a leader. He's a leader among men. And, um, you know, I don't think anyone's perfect. I have not been perfect. The only thing that I have, am noble, I am noble about this cause of, you know, trying to get justice for what happened, you know, hanging in there, figuring it out, you know. When I was young, and this is what I meant to tell you, well, if, if Trump's not on the, t if it's like a Ben Carson so-and-so, or if it's like a, a Rubio, any of these other people, these jerks are going to, whatever, I'm not participating because I, I just, I just, I saw what happened with the, the whole, you know, it's, it's all rigged anyway, but, you know, but, but Trump is not rigged, and so that makes it very interesting to me to see what they're going to do with this wild stallion running around, you know, and if they're going to break the horse and rope him down and make him heed, uh -huh. let's see what they do. I said, oh, no, Trump's playing the back room. Trump, no, Trump's, no, they're coming after him with everything they got. And, uh, you know, the establishment, which is basically, I've sold their soul to the devil. That's why they're called the establishment. Whenever you hear establishment, just think Satanism. A Franklin cover-up or whatever. A Bohemian Grove. Just, you know, that's what you're looking at. There's no Christian anything involved. It's a war against Christianity, you might have noticed. It's war against God. It's a war against truth, and it's a war against reality. For the purpose, because you're food. You're food. And if you've given nod to the devil, but you haven't really sold your soul, you're kind of the perfectly possessed, um, you're just food. You know, you be, you, you're agreeing to be food. You will lose your lives. I mean, that's, that's absolutely true. You will lose your, your chance. You will not go with the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not be saved. 
You can go to church all day long, every day, every day of the week, go to Bible study, do all this stuff. But if you're found on that side of things, uh, you're out. Depart from me, I never knew you. Matthew 7, uh, whatever, 21, 22, 23, right in there. That is exactly what your fate will be. The Lord expects people, he's no respecter of persons. You either with him or against him. You know, there is no tweener going on there. There is no, oh, I understand. God is interested in, you know, bringing up, he's doing a work here with people. And, and you know, surviving this and coming through it and going with him uh, and, and relying on him and all that. It's, it's part of the work that he's doing. And, you know, he'll have his harvest and he'll have his, probably at least a third of humanity will go with him and two thirds may not. But he's going to get the cream of the crop and he's going to, and these souls are going to go into eternity, and um, they're going to, they're going to escape the Saturn, escape the cube. I'm doing a song right now about escaping the cube, about a, a, a guy that was mocked. Well, you see, Jeremiah didn't like being mocked. No one really likes being mocked, and these people, you know, you got to understand, it's, it's like, but Jeremiah had the answer. It was Yahweh, you know, the answer. And look what they did, you know? Uh, and so they killed the goose that laid the golden egg. He had, they, they had a direct conduit to God through Jeremiah, but they just couldn't resist. And, you know, in, in, you know half the time locking him up, then letting him go, they, they couldn't make their mind up with him. And I've experienced much the same thing that he's experienced. You're locked up, they let you go. They, you know, they, they just don't know what to do. It's just, it's, it's, it's a big inconvenience because they really just want everything shrouded in darkness, everyone playing pretend and everyone going along. And that's why they, they loved it when they had the, 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 you know, the evening news and no internet. And they could just control reality from that. And then they had your teachers and your, your false history books and your false science journals and your false this and false that. You lived in a total false reality. And then what they want is your soul in exchange for leaving you alone. It, 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 most people would sell out just to be left alone and not for any fame or fortune. And, you know, the, the answer is to repent to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for real and walk it on out of here, buddy. You know, I mean, why, why keep pointing at other people or trying to find, well, I understand. It's kind of like me trying to stick with a ketogenic diet. Oftentimes I, you know, I kind of justify going out and having some carbs and stuff. And it's kind of a difficult thing to follow. But I mean, you know, no sugar has been very good for me or low sugar, you know, cutting the sugar. So... You know, but I mean, oftentimes, you know, you just, you just, you just aren't, you're just not quite perfect. And with God, it's like, it's, it, it's, it's, it's all perfect because it's either yes or no, say, there is no maybe, or God understands. It's, it's just like, um, it's just a principle of nature, you know, there's no understanding. It's just either it's, it is what it is, or it isn't what it is, isn't, you know, it's it just, it's that simple. Um, but if people think that they're going to somehow um, b be Satanists, I mean, look at these old Luciferians, you know, these old rock stars and stuff. These guys have, you know, they're all trying to live on and get life extension, you know. They're upset. That's, that's their answer. Life extension, also cloning. I didn't talk about that, but yes, they do. They do have fun with clones, don't they? But yes, if they could clone themselves and then download their consciousness into the clone and go on, uh, you know, they've got plenty of customers lined up for that, you know. And uh, that's, uh, don't think that isn't going on right now. That's, that's been going on um, for a long time, a lot longer than uh, this century. <laughs> well, what they used to do is they'd have babies, you know, and they would take the soul out of the baby and then, and then the soul of the departed one they would have like a seance kind of thing and then put that, try to download that consciousness into that new baby so that, and then they would like, with the, when the baby grows up to be like a kid, like about five years old, they start bowing down and worshiping the kid. <laughs> uh, that's called witchcraft. 101. Bloodline. Elite. The Kwisah Cataract. Remember that in Dune? The Queen, the, they're trying to breed the Messiah. They want their Messiah to come, and they want to be saved. 
They want the Messiah to come and really put a black eye on God, that a psychopath meanie. And, you know, give them the life they want to go to the stars. A new world order. A thousand points of light. Where we go to the stars and we explore like Star Trek and we, we have our adventures and we, and we, and we live free. To hell with anyone that disagrees with that. Get them. All the while, you see, they're deceived into thinking that that's all possible while the slaughter continues. So sad when you see it all without filters. So sad. So very, very sad. Because you see, you see what could have been. But you know, I'm, I'm just aware of all the children crying and all the, all the people suffering. Young, young people like, you know, not much older, you know, or younger than me about my age, cursing the fact that they were born, you know. I, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I cursed the day I was born. I, I was suffering so badly th those years. I just wished I had never been born. And, um, you know, it, it's, 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 I, I felt so ashamed because, I mean, I didn't know what I did you know, but, but it didn't matter that the, the result of the bullying and the trauma and the meanness and, you know, the, 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 the murder attempts, let's face it, there's plenty of those back then too. You know, there are thousands of incidents, you know, but I, I just mentioned that one today. Um, made me so ashamed. I feel like such a failure that I, that I couldn't even show my face. And people would say to me, well, what did you do wrong? And I'd say, I, I, I don't know, I was born. I, that's what I did wrong, and I'm so sorry. Even later in life, when I was in my 50s, mm -hmm, I would just apologize for no reason. You know, that trauma was still with me from that, from that age. I mean, they, they really ruined my life. I mean, they, they made it so I, I couldn't function. And... Uh, at the time, I didn't understand, you see, so that's what made it so traumatic. And then it stayed with me to the point where I was still apologizing. To where my daughter would hit me in the arm every time. I'd say, I feel like I must apologize. I'm so ashamed to breathe, you know. I'm so ashamed to exist. I, I'm sorry. And they, they did that on purpose to cripple me and to, 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 to make sure that I am of no effect and of nothing and nowhere. And uh, it didn't stop there, of course. <laughs> oh, no. The fun was just beginning uh, with that, with that, uh, with that, uh, they, they, you know, that eventually led to suicide attempt and a coma, which I came out of. And they had they had everyone at the ready for when they broke me down totally and then finally they provided me with a pharmaceutical phenobarbital or whatever else knowing that I would do it and then yep they showed up just with what they do rob a pharmacy how'd they get that yeah well it was all being orchestrated by an adult who was the head of the thing which was a uh, oddly enough he'd been a composer in Hollywood he ended up being a music teacher but he was the one that uh, orchestrated the whole thing and uh, in cahoots with people in Los Angeles to get me to kill myself. So then, you know, and then I survived that for some miracle. And, uh, and then they said, well, the only way you could survive that was if God made you survive that. I mean, that's that you have a purpose because obviously God saved you. So then, you know, began the long journey from that very low point into trying to understand, you know, what exactly uh, what is the problem here? Because as I look back, you know, even from there, I realized that I didn't intend anyone any harm, and I had not um, been angry with anyone, and I, you know, I mean, I mean, I was when I was attacked, and then I, I did retaliate a time or two, but I mean, it was all normal responses to, you know, to 
what I that ended up perceiving is people just trying to do me in. I mean, you know, so you fight back a little bit. Now, oh, you fought back, oh, psychopath. No, you, they, you're supposed to sit there and be killed and not complain. I mean, that's what they want, you know, fish in a barrel. And, uh, but I didn't understand who they were. What exactly is they? And I kept trying to ask the question. I said, you know, so I knew then when I was like, you know, after that horrible event, I realized that, you know, I wouldn't do that. And I, you know, I've, you know, the, 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 the well, yeah, I barely survived that, but it, the, most of the others that I had known, they, they didn't make it. They did kill themselves. And here's what they were guilty of, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just say it very clearly. They were children of, of the Almighty God. And he said, well, why did God let these? Well, he took them home, you know. He just used them to show what they do. Now, if I were them, and of course you're talking about a vast majority of people, I would not feel so proud of that record of harming innocent kids that mean no harm and have never done anything wrong to anyone, really, you know, the, being kids, you know, they're mischievous, but to just go ahead and bully them, break them down, then kill them, even if by their own hand, of course, they break them down to where they wish they were dead, then provide the means to do themselves. I mean, that's the pattern. Uh, so that they have no guilt on their hands. You have guilt on your hands for doing that. And anybody who's, who's, who's in that club uh, has collective guilt on your hands for, for murdering the innocents and for all the wars and for all the, uh, uh, all that blood cries up from the ground and God's going to avenge all that blood. Don't you understand that? He will bring justice. Uh, you reap what you sow. I can't keep repeating it over and over. There's, there's no getting away with it. Look at this situation. This whole thing got laid down on, a, uh, on an audio tape, you know what I mean? It got, it got, it got presented a, in a way that, um, you know, most people would find it very, very difficult to, uh, you know, have much negative to say about it. You know, you may not like that uh, I'm a survivor of these awful people. Um, that, that sought to, to do harm to people that meant no harm to them. I mean, this is what it comes down to. But it's because they, you know, joined a thing where they have no choice. And that when you see that, then, of course, you have compassion and you don't, you don't need any personal data. You understand. When, once you actually understand, you can let it go. You know, you don't have to remain angry. I mean, you know, you remain angry at certain things that happen, but I mean, you can see what they do. I mean, they killed Jesus. And they lied to do that. And they kill the saints, and they kill anything connected to God. The world, the entire world, is at war with God. Oh, well, they know he exists. And the entire world is pretty much in the lap of Satan. Pretty much across the board except for the the innocent ones which are being preyed upon as food again if there were no lambs there would be no wolves does that make sense they exist and really wolves is too good of a term they're parasites see they have to have a host without that host they can't live, just like the, the movie. They, the, the people who run the show and run the world in the movie, The Maze Runner, um, need the uh, material, the blood, tissue, and, and other fluids from those who are immune to the disease, who could otherwise live out their lives and have a, have a normal life on Earth. But they're not being allowed to live, ladies and gentlemen. They're being grabbed and stuck into these warehouses to let the dead people who would otherwise die, live by siphoning off their blood and siphoning off their brains and whatever else. Completely backwards from, from what, what, what should be. Just like our society is completely backwards 
from the way it should be. Our society is evil, and it should be good. Our society reveres death, and it should be revering life. Um, we say all these things about ourselves as a country, for example. None of them are true. We prey upon innocence and innocent blood because we know that collectively as a society, if we don't, we perish. And what does that make us? No different from the organization in the Maze Runner. Uh, by the way, their name is Wicked in the Maze Runner. That's right. So people think, well, get with it then. Just go backwards. I remember there was this, this, this like cult band named Captain Beyond back in 1970. And I think it had John Lord. And I'm not really sure. It was a guy from Deep Purple, I think was the singer. Um, and uh, what I liked about it was a real tight, real progressive, um, uh, you know, band. But, uh, you know, all totally satanic, of course. Well, every, uh, they all were. But, I mean, they had this song, which was totally about the devil, called Dancing Madly Backwards. And I remember I used to love that. It had a great beat. had a great, it was really very, it had a very advanced kind of uh, music. But the lyrics were terrible. I mean, it was all about embracing the backwards, right? Embracing the wrong way, embracing, uh, you know, murder, embracing death, embracing perversion, embracing backwards thinking, embracing rudeness, meanness, lack of decorum, lack of common sense, embracing all the, the, the any quality, rejecting any quality that could be of God or from the Bible and embracing selfishness, narcissism, etc. You know, in other words, the war against God. Embracing, see, Satan could not exist without God. Satan is created to be at war with God because uh, of this situation. I mean, if, if Satan wouldn't even exist if it weren't for us in the capacity that he's in. He'd have no purpose. His purpose is to come after us and force us to go backwards and to turn. And if we, for whatever reason, don't understand that, then uh, he wants to uh, take us out. And let's face it, people are motivated by money. He plays plenty of, pays plenty of money for people that uh, go around offing people and doing all kinds of, the, doing the devil's work. You know, they, they make a nice living off uh, heinous crimes, covered because it's in the club. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Uh, the only thing you can do at this point is go with the Lord. But when I look back on, you know, my, I had no youth, first of all. That's true. I had no real, you know, there was no, no teenage years, no college years, no, none of that. It was just, you know, survival and I tried to, I knew it was going to take a long time to figure out, you know. And I spent a good part of 40 years, I think, trying to figure out what happened, you know back in Los Angeles among, you know, the, the elite society. I mean, I used to think it was just that, but then I found out, in my world travels, I found out, and, oh, ouch, it's uh, everything, everyone, everywhere, all the time. And when people say it isn't, they're pointing to the Illuminati over here, or the thing over there, or this over here, then I know they're lying, you see. Understand? They're lying. You people just for whatever reason, uh, bounced off the mirror. You, weren't, you did not go to the other side. You're, you belong to God. I know a lot of you are rebelling against God or even call yourselves atheists right now. But you belong to God anyway. I mean, you know, because by default, you belong to God because you've been tested. And, you, you know, the, thing, the sad irony here is you've been tested, you've been vetted, and you succeeded. But then you rejected God, even though you resisted the devil, you know? Uh, but you belong to God. I mean, that's where you belong. 
they say, well, you know, if the only belonging that's going to be done is going to be with us. It's like, not true. You can belong to the Lord. Right? It was funny when I got back to Los Angeles after that, that whole coma incident. That's when I was told that my friend, my boy, boyhood friend Todd had, didn't make it. Those the words the, the, the guy used. He didn't make it. Same word they use today, didn't make it. Why not just say um, he died or, you know, he passed or he had an accident or why, why put it that way? Well, because, see, I saw when he was freaked out and I remember we were sitting at this table at a beach club, a very exclusive one in uh, Los Angeles at, at the beach. And we were, you know, sitting there with a guy that later on became a big movie producer, um, you know, big big mogul, you know, type of guy. And he was sitting there, and he was already in the club, you know, I don't know, forever. You know, he's like the type of guy that would, you know, um, at the drop of a hat, join anything. I mean, it, no morals, no scruples, nothing. Just, just, just you know, a hack of a, of a human being, a hack. And so he's taunting Todd. He's, 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 he's torturing him. He's, he's having fun with Todd being totally traumatized. And then I couldn't say anything because... I was de dealing with it too, and I was just wondering what was going on. I was watching it, and it was freaking me out. So I had to. So I, that was an interesting lunch we had. And um, I guess we're never going to get to the bottom of it. But I always blamed that producer guy. I always thought that he was the one that you know was basically sticking the knife in and twisting it. I saw him do that with my own two eyes and my ears. He was just like saying word games and you know, uh, acting like Todd was an idiot. You know what I mean? Mocking him, just like Jeremiah. Same kind of thing. Pushing him further into his trauma. Not helping him. And I always thought that was so cruel and so mean and so awful that I, you know, I've uh, often wondered how he could do movies and stories if he had sort of participated in this guy's murder. You know, that's the way I look at it. He, you know... Without evidence of other people, I feel that he, you know, he basically murdered him that day. I mean, he was, after that, he, you know, and then eventually he didn't make it. And what he was telling me, he says, hey, don't you see it all around? Don't you see they're, they're all, you know, right? You know, he was having that experience. And uh, for that, he was killed. Because, see, the whole idea is to get him into the group before that kind of awakening happens. Right? Uh, get him in before they can start questioning reality. You know, kill them and kill their curiosity and make sure they never question anything. Um, so I often wondered if, if that... Uh, young man then if you know we were probably 17 at that time about a year after the other things were happening I often wondered if if that boy then now big studio mogul big big honcho I just wonder if he ever had a thought about that or just ever had guilt about that I certainly remember it as if it, as if it was yesterday. No, I don't hold it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, you know, big honcho in society, you know, above re uh, reproach. And here's me, little old me, the demasker, remembering all of it, going, wait a second, you know, I don't think there's any, anything to be celebrating there, Mr. Celebrity. <laughs> You know, you still got a little bit of a debt to pay here. You know, you got to reap what you sow eventually. And, you know, ka-ching for, uh, you know, I'm sure you got a pop for all, uh, who, who knows how many bodies are in the wake, you know, to boost you into uh, superstar status. So we play this charade upon the earth, you know, and Jeremiah is mocked because uh, they mock him every day. And then... But at least he had the Lord to go to, you know. 
with me, I didn't understand. And so I just had to suffer. And the suffering, you know, um, shaped my behavior, becoming very reclusive and, you know, very... Uh, I just said, look, I've got to wait this out until I find out some information. Because I would flat out ask him, well, what is, it, what is it you want me to do? What is it you want me to be? What do you want from me? What, what, are you, what are you saying? And then they would say, I'm not saying anything. You're the one that's saying stuff. Okay, I'm going to play games. Okay, and that's all I ever got. I never got a straight answer from any of them. And that, that showed me it was a big deal. You know, it's bigger than man. Say, man can't control it, right? And uh, they never give a straight answer because uh, if they do, they, <clears throat> they, you know, they might lose uh, a paycheck or something. They might, they might get in trouble. They might, their career might go down. Whatever. It's all for greedy money. They don't want to give up even a dime. <laughs> They'd rather see you die than give up a dime. And if they had their wish, total darkness, they would be dead. For I mean, their bodies and all gone. They would be gone off the face of the earth. Don't they, folks, really, after everything that's been said here today, don't they understand that at long last, they wouldn't exist if they got their wish? And the answer is, they don't care, because the people that run them, uh, it is their wish to eradicate humanity from the face of the earth. God's the only one that keeps it in check, keeps it going. Okay, so God's the source of the power, not the devil. It's God that we must revere. Right, but if you do, then you'll be like Jeremiah. Well, what if you just, you're just secular, you just don't really believe in anything, you're just kind of going along? Oh, they'll leave you alone for a while. You know, they'll let you kind of have an illusion of having a little life. But ultimately, they want souls. And you've got one, they want it. And that's going to involve your consent. And without that consent, no ticky, no washy. So if you're not giving up that consent, they're coming after you. And if they ain't coming after you, then you've got a problem somewhere. Well, you know, with me, I mean, they just put rumors on the internet that I'm already a Satanist and I've already lost my soul and <laughs> that this is just hot air. <laughs> so, you know, to, so that'll, you know, throw people off the trail. Uh, all I'm trying to do is just show you that it's everything, everyone, all the time. And it's the world system. That means the whole world, just like what the Bible says. Not what a lot of these, you know, people coming out of the closet saying, I was an Illuminati sex slave, and blah, 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 blah. Bullshit, man. That's all just, you know, I mean, almost half of that's coming out of their imagination anyway. They just have a very limited perspective on it. You know, so we all get wrapped up in, oh, they sold their soul, and, and Jay Z sold their soul, and Beyonce, she turns into a demon with, with like an alien face, and then it's, yeah, yeah. And they don't think that, hey, wait, that demon's at your door right in your own backyard, right here in, you know, Ohio. You know, they're, there they are down at the corner over there in, uh, you know, Schenectady. <laughs> there they are. You know, here it's going on again over there. And the whole world is, it, it's, it's, you talk about gang stalking, it is the spiritual battle. It's called persecution. And it's going on all over the place. People who don't know each other being amassed into cooperation to target an individual. Because no individual, and it's getting worse. They got ISIS, you know, that, that we, we formed ISIS. America created ISIS to, you know, eventually import them here and then to have them go after people they don't want. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the, the same thing. Well, how's that different? And they feel if they can eradicate all the people from the earth that they don't like, the, the Christians, you know, God-fearing people, you know, people with, who are intact, the living, I call them the living, as opposed to them, the dead, uh, they'll have a nice utopia. No, they won't be here because there'll be no equilibrium, which is, you know, in all of nature. And I think some of them actually heard my talk. 
from, you know, and they got Putin to, you know, to the ISIS shuffle and, you know, and let's hope he, but the problem he's got now is he's, you know, fighting a proxy war with the United States. Because we're now, you know, we said we, 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 we're not going to be giving anything to the rebels. Now we're completely giving them everything. And, um, you know, so we're, we're there on the ground, um, you know, backing ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra and all the rest of them, uh, which are all CIA, you know, uh, uh, you know products. And uh, so now we're going to fight Russia uh, through ISIS, through backing the rebels in Syria to overthrow Assad under that umbrella, we can keep the whole thing going. So now they've decided once again to um, boost up that which Putin has decimated. And my prediction, of course, is that since this is America, uh, America will, in that endeavor, completely lose. The problem is, is your tax dollars are going to pay for this folly of trying to be all things. That, I understand the game they're playing. That, that the, 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 it's, it's not my country anymore, so it's, well, whoever country it is, you know, whatever thing they're doing, I understand the game they're playing, the neocons, yeah. Basically, what they're trying to do is take over the Middle East for themselves. And they're, they're deceptively, you know, formed ISIS and Al-Qaeda and funding them and training them and doing all this to be the bully force to go around getting what they want. And then they plan to get rid of ISIS in the end anyway. You know what I mean? They'll turn on them. And, and so it's, now they don't want Putin to turn on them. The problem that they have is that China is joining Putin and all these other, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amassing into World War. I think Obama's legacy is going to be he started World War III because he's poo-poo baby diapers and it didn't go the way he wanted. And he, so I'm just going to do a scorched earth, you know. I mean, he's just, a, he's just I can't believe that God tells me he's a prodigal. I can't believe it. Someone that petty. And that, and that vindictive, you know, but I guess like all dictators, I mean, he's, he's no different than many of the other famous dictators that are petty and petulant and pedantic. There's some good words for you. Um, you know, and, 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 and vapid, right? He's completely um, vapid. People oh, he's really smart. He's, he's a marionette. What are you talking about? He's, He's, he's no different than Bush. He's the, the plant, the, you know, the, 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 it's the same program, you know? Doesn't matter who's president. Doesn't matter what you vote for. You know, I, it just, I, look, here's where we ought to put our time in. Pray the Lord brings good things to this earth. Now, I may check it out and not put this pot up because it's, you know, I'm bleeding from every wound. I mean, you can't expect me to be that raw, you know, that wouldn't be fair to me. I mean, you know, you've heard enough like that. Well, I realized yesterday, you know, I was, uh, that I had some more, you know, memory surface and unresolved traumas that I had to deal with, you know, and regarding this issue of the devil and the Satanists and the, and the other people. It's like, God, is there anything else we could focus on? And I was so bummed out because I had to focus on this again. I'm trying to be free. I, you know, I want to make music and things, and, but it's just all, it's all revolving around this. I just can't get away from it, you know, and nobody else can either. So we're stuck, we're stuck with this mess. And so, you know, I realized that I had to, you know, acknowledge what happened and how I, I kind of acted like it didn't. You know, like when someone's raped, you know, how they act like nothing happened and they, they suppress it. That's what I did because I was raped, you know, raped psychologically big time. And I acted like it didn't happen because I was so ashamed. You can understand that, right? And that shame and guilt that, that, that was, was, was fostered there and created by the, these people, not me, but created by them, uh, grew into a, a, a horrible thing to where I was, you know, ashamed to uh, exist because I thought I was so bad. And it turned out in the end, I wasn't bad at all. I mean, in other words, I, you know, I'm not saying it was the greatest thing. I was probably a pretty selfish kid, you know, and I, I was pretty rebellious and I, you know, I, I was, 
definitely prone to naughty behavior and stuff. You know, just like kids, right? Like teenagers. But that sort of stunted my growth right there. In other words, what, what, what took over then was the uh, shame and the guilt. And then my whole life was ruined after that from just being totally ashamed and totally guilty that where I would, you know, attract, you know, the, 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 that kind of reinforcement and betrayal and harm to, 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 to equal that paradigm because I had suppressed it. See what I mean? And, and so it's coming back and over and over again throughout my life. And then until um, I gave it up to the Lord, you know, and at that point, I started opening my eyes and for real and, and really doing a, a great examination of all these incidents and all these things that happened in my past. I guess these are memoirs now. Um, it's the kind of thing that, like I say, you know, when I talked about this before on something like, uh, you know, when, when I was invited to talk on this uh, Buzzsaw show, the Sean Stone show, and then they couldn't air what I said because I just basically was like this podcast. And they can't air this, right? Because it implies... You know, it, it, it convicts everybody. It's, it's like, it's, it's a horrible thing. Well, society would want to sweep this under the rug because it's like they don't want to acknowledge that they hurt people like that, you know. And um, I didn't want to acknowledge it either. I wanted to sweep it under the rug too. I wanted to act like, you know, we're still buddies. You know, I, aren't we? Can't we be? I'm willing to, let, to forget about it, but see, you can't just forget about it because it works on your body, it works on your mind, it, 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 it works on you psychologically, to where if you don't deal with traumas that happen to you, you know, it really, it really affects everything that happens to you, everything you think about yourself. Was, for example, my self-image was completely obliterated. And that sort of thing, you know, from that period of time, and then it eventuated and you know, suicidal and this and that, and all kinds of bad things, you know, that of, of being ashamed, of being shamed by others who wanted to reinforce that at, at, under suicide, unto, you know, under death, you know, one way or the other. And then, mind you, these are kids who are 15, 16, 17, uh, 18, you know what I mean? These are, that, that's that age group that is fully aware and cognizant of what they're doing and why they're doing it in a very structured manner, which is very sad. Because that means they sold their souls to the devil and intentionally and were working on his behalf or their behalf or the demonic behalf or the realm of the demons or that kingdom of the world's behalf and, um, and, and doing people in at that age. Doing people in unto death at that age. You know, they were already there at that age. And already fully functioning as, as, as a satanic army. You know, targeting anybody that uh, disagreed with, with uh, degradation, shame, humiliation, and death. And most of the people did not survive. They died. Only after a tremendous amount of pain and suffering caused by them. You see... That's what they don't want to surface, that kind of thing. You know, that knowledge of how many victims. Now let's multiply this by how many victims do you think they had? Well, they know that every victim they get, they get a, a little pop. You know, they get a paycheck, they get a job, they get a something. So they start getting used to doing bad things in exchange for money. That is, doing people in. It's just that simple. It's exactly what James Dashner wrote in his, in his novel, The Scorch Trials. It's, it's the same thing. It's what God talked about in uh, uh, Ezekiel 13. It's the same thing. To cause the souls to, 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 you know, that should die to live and that the souls that should live ought to die. Or to have the sick preying upon the well so the sick can keep on living at the detriment and destruction of the well. That's the Scorch Trials. That's why I like it, because it resonates so deeply. Indeed, if you look carefully at the world system, you'll see that's exactly what's going on. 
the, the, the sick, twisted, demented, that should die, the criminal element, the people that prey on other people and, 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 and create human misery, are the ones in power hunting down anyone and anything that has happiness, peace. Oh, no, 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 don't, get, don't make the mistake of saying they have to be going hail Jesus to get that. No, no, no. Any, if, if there was an island of people, okay, who are living uh, harmoniously, you know, and just giving praise to God, and, you know, they may have the flesh and they have, you know, they, but they're, they're kind of going on biblical principles in there, and they're, and they're getting along fine, and they're happy, and the kids are happy. They would find a way to invade the island, round up all the kids and put them in CPS, Child Protective Services, put all the other people in jail for having illegally had a life without their permission. And you know it and I know that. It's exactly true. It's just, they're there to, you know, the, the powers that be are there to prey upon human kindness, uh, you, you know, human joy, human love, uh, human respect and regard for others. And make sure that just isn't anywhere present. So you have the uprising, and we see the manifestations of, um, you know, riots and all the, all these other things, talking about you know justice for things that happened thousands and millions of years ago, and they're just going to keep on finding any excuse to keep people in a perpetual state of shock, horror. I mean, the same thing that was done to me, for no good reason. That you know that I, you know, very painful, you know, to. To have you know people you thought were friends turn on you, you know, and in a in a, in a very par way that would make you very paranoid. It's really weird, you know, not understanding where that was coming from. You know, that was the biggest problem, and then seeing you know man's inhumanity to man on the wider scale, and showing how these people that were the bullies then, you know, you know today they're getting hit with the world's bullying them. They're getting it right back on the nose, just like that. Now, you know, I know God is good enough so that I feel that sense of justice in him. You know what I mean? I, I don't feel I need, I mean, it's him that's gonna do vengeance and let him, you know, he's, he's gonna balance all the books and uh, he warned people about that. But personally, it, it, I've lived with this so long and I've walked so far that I don't, you know, I don't feel that connection like I need someone to, they were me, you know, specific individuals. I see it more as a, they, anyone in the world acts like that when they're possessed, you know, and they do things when they're possessed that they wouldn't do if they knew Jesus. They would be friends with me, we'd be breaking bread and it'd be fine. See what I mean? So I, you know, I, 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 the personal animus is gone pretty much. And uh, it wasn't gone when I started broadcasting. I was pretty angry about everything, you know, but I was just kind of waking up at that point, it seemed. You know, I put the pieces together. And then now, with this other memory that I'd totally forgotten about, you know, and then and, and it, it served. And it's not that great a story. It's not like, oh, I, I was down in the bottom of Area 51, the aliens were uh, uh, sticking me with electrodes and different things and causing me to dream about things and going to different portals and dimensions to have sex with weird creatures and, you know, to steal my DNA and, uh, you know, nothing so exotic as that. But something very, very bizarre. Because the only time I ever saw any behavior like that was like in the movies, uh, something like Carrie, which was, you know, which was a, a very kind of over the top, you know, singular concept of, of, of a kid that's being bullied for being different, you know, and then, then, then into this wild uh, scenario. And, um, and I suppose that's what it could have been. I, I could say, well, it's because, you know, my brother got it too, the same thing. It's because he and I were different. And it's like, no, that's, that's not true. See, that's, I've said that in the past and that's a false statement. I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm, because this is a Zeph report, if I say something that's false, I get to say, I'm sorry, I made a false statement, I'll correct it now. You know, I've, I've accorded myself that as opposed to uh, having to cover up everything that doesn't happen the way I said it would and go, oh, well, I really meant this, you know, or yes, God backed it off because we prayed. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? But I made a false statement. And so we were different, you know, he was different. And um, no, we were intact 
or we were, we belong to each one of us. We belong to the Lord. We were just, you know, they always used to call me the God mind, you know, when I was a, a little kid, because I was always talking about God and the universe and, you know, just like the way it is now. I was the same back then, you know what I mean? And that is really not allowed. And because I was like that, you know, anything satanic, I mean, I bristled at, I didn't want it, I rejected it, you know? Just naturally, it wasn't like I thought about, oh, it's satanic, I reject. I just naturally kind of rejected without really having to label it being satanic. But, you know, whenever that stuff got going around me, I just, it was just oil and water. I just did not get along with it at all. It just, you know, I came from up there where I came from. It's just, it's, it, 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 it made no sense, you know? And then I saw kids talking about life became very cheap and, you know, sex was nothing. It was like going to the bathroom and, um, you know, uh, being mean, shallow behavior, shallow kind of logic, uh, talking to people in a very rude way. I mean, the kids just all became polluted like that, you know, who joined up or who, who entered the club, if you will. And they just acted all entitled and that they were privileged and they were... You know, just really the ugly American, just really ugly, gross people going around wielding their, their social status around like a baseball bat and bludgeoning anybody that uh, looked at them the wrong way because they're the privileged, the few, the elite, the great. And they really had that sense of entitlement. Then later on, you know, like you see them now, you know, and then, then you, you know, that's when your heart goes out because you feel sad, you know, you feel... You know, look at this poor guy that, that I knew in SoCal, and we were boyhood friends, and then I see him and his wife is sobbing because, you know, her husband isn't, you know, isn't really there. You know, there's a, you know, he's demonically possessed. And, you know, there's, you know, I counted a bunch of time when I was in his presence, uh, you know, a little reunion, uh, and, uh, where he wasn't there. It wasn't him at all. It was something else. And then it would, he'd flip back. He'd go kind of back and forth. But I mean, it, clearly he, you know, not intact. Clearly he had lost um, whatever made him him. And the funny thing is they kind of believed in the Lord a bit, you know, I guess. And maybe that's the way of redemption. Maybe this guy will be redeemed in the end. But I, I don't think before losing everything, I mean, he was, you know, he became Mr. Society. And, you know, uh, it, and I, I told him, hey, you know, uh, that's not the way to go. Well, I, I mentioned it, and he was so incensed that I was assuming that he was a Satanist. He was so mad. I, I didn't say the word Satanist or anything. I mean, no one says that. I, I, it's like, um, you know, you refer to the club or the this or that. You know what I mean? You'd, you use other terms. So I used other terms, and I, I said, you don't have to go that way, you know? And... Uh, he was so mad, he probably could have killed me right then. He just couldn't handle that. You know, that, that someone outside that situation could see exactly what he was. And mention it, like, hey, you don't have to go that, you know what I mean? Not, not assuming he's an intact, normal person that right now that's hidden. He's just going, hey, you know, obviously you're, you know, uh, the devil's got you. So, I, you know. You don't have to go that way. That's, that's, it, was, it was clear as day. I meant it very succinctly, and then the, 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 the hang up, and then I would email and something, you know, no communication, nothing. And from that moment forward, it was total cut off. Which, of course, means he's guilty. Because if you're not guilty, you'd say, What are you talking about, Zaf? I'm not saying that. You, you know, I'm not, right? It was none of that. It was just click. <laughs> I was trying to help him because he, he was, you know, half in and half out. He wasn't there. I was trying to help him come back. But, um, you know, that's a big no-no uh, because, uh, you know, he is to be harvested. And you're taking, you know, a, a commodity away from the owner, and the owner doesn't like it, and so the owner is going to come after you for poaching. That's right. I have more in common with the owner than I do with him, my old friend. And he was one of those people that was, you know, he didn't really bully me when I was a kid, but I mean, he was in, in that same group that was. So he was, you know, definitely a, um, 
I was trying to make peace, you know, and, and I, I couldn't do it because this thing was between us. It's clear to me that these perfectly possessed ones, um, you know, which are functional human beings, and they work and they succeed and they go on talk shows and they, you know, they, they seem like they're, they're fine, you know, until you see a little more deeply and then you realize that ah, there's no one, there's like a tape recording I've been listening to. Yeah. Understood. And that's a great tragedy in this world and it's, it involves a great deal of many people. And, um, and, and then, you know, you realize there's different levels of it. Like when someone writes a book, to produce, say, they bought, write a book on 9-11 and they reinforce the, the ridiculous narrative of the 9-11 Commission or the Warren Commission or whatever. Then you, 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 at this point, I feel sorry for that person. They're having to do that for the team in order to keep their status. They want to keep the lie going about our society and how it works. And as a result of that, um, getting people to lie and to compromise to corrupt themselves, right? That's all part of the game. And when people then willingly corrupt themselves and uh, put a good face on everything, try to keep, keep the lid on Disneyland, then um, uh, what does that make their job or their, you know, in other words, they c couldn't be trusted, right? You would say, well, that would be an untrustworthy individual, would it not? Okay, I'm going to go. That's all I can do for you today, folks. You know, I kind of ran out of steam here at the end, but uh, if you cut it back to about two hours, it'll be good, you know. Um, I felt I had to wind down on this. I didn't want to let you go because I was still having thoughts about, you know, about this horrible traumatic situation that I remembered yesterday that surfaced, and then I had... You know, looked on the internet. I also, yeah, you know, we haven't talked about human cloning and all that because I just try to stay away from these peripheral issues that have, you know, and I see there's people out there becoming famous off, you know, the, 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 they really do sell their souls and then they go play in those cloning center and they have clones and then they download their consciousness into it and then they, they have all kinds of wild sex and then they pop back into their bodies and they're back at home. You know, I can't, you know, it's like alien abduction. I, I can't really, you know, yes, all that's going on. I just can't, I can't. It's just, to me, that's just utter folly. You know, these are just perverts doing their pervert thing, you know. So they're going to find any which way. The new one is really not going to be clones. It's robots. It's robots. Naughty robots. And that's the thing they want to roll out. I mean, that's, they want to roll it out to the general public, not just to the, to the elites. But they will, would say... You know, my research yesterday, they were going, oh, the Illuminati, they have these cloning centers. There's no, there's, there's no name like Illuminati. I mean, that's, that's what I don't understand. How come they're saying that? If you say what I say, you have credibility. But if you go around and say, well, the Illuminati, that's the, you know, maybe you're doing it innocently, but that's where you sort of blow your credibility. You know, because they don't, certainly don't refer to themselves as that. You know, they, they, uh, you know, they serve the dark master. They serve the dark lord. I mean, that's that's where their affiliation is. Um, whatever wing of this or wing of that or Illuminati this or you know Club of Rome or whatever kind of thing you want to call it. I mean, they don't. They don't. There are no distinctions. It's just one thing. And it they are cognizant of living in a multi-dimensional world where they do go between dimensions and they're allowed to to see stuff you can't see. That's true, and that's why they feel so superior. Because they feel like they can rule the universe, when in actuality, they can't rule their own, uh, the next five minutes. <laughs> anyway, until we meet again.